Save the Cat, The Pope in the Pool, Double Mumbo Jumbo, Laying Pipe, Black Vet, AKA Too Much Marzipan. Watch out for that glacier. The Covenant of the Ark. Keep the press out. When Blake Snyder was alive, he wrote this game-changing book called Save the Cat. And listen, rather not you like his techniques or his structure methods or his controversial statements in his book, his filmmaking structure techniques are taught all around the country. So it's time we learned about what Blake described as the eight immutable laws of screenplay physics. Save the cat. This is the law that states as soon as we meet the main character, we have to see him or her in action, doing something that allows the audience to empathize with him. The MC should do something that gets the audience to side with him. We meet him, we like him because he or her did something to get us on their side. Now listen, this doesn't necessarily have to be a good thing. This could be a very bad thing. He's probably doing something scary, something clever, or he's just kicking somebody's behind. Listen, when writing, it's very important to get the audience in sync with our main character, and this is how you do it. Saving the cat is capturing the audience's attention with the MC. This is part of the reason why we care about him or her. Now, if you'd like to learn more about specific ways to save the cat, please take a look at this video right here. And that's all about how you can get your audience to empathize with your main character, AKA save the cat. The Pope in the Pool. So every great story with any amount of depth requires some amount of exposition. So exposition is backstory or details about the plot that is essential for the audience to know if the audience is gonna move forward and enjoy the rest of the story so that they can actually understand what happens next. But the problem many of us writers face is burying the exposition so deep in our stories that our audience finds it difficult to distinguish exposition from main story. Now I agree with Blake Snyder, exposition is probably the worst part of any complex movie. And this is exactly why modern masters of storytelling mask their exposition with innovative imagery. What we've gotta do is distract our audience while delivering exposition so that they're not quite picking up on the fact that we're actually giving them exposition while we're giving them exposition. So Snyder describes the scenario where representatives are visiting the Pope at the Vatican, where the Vatican pool, and the Pope is wearing a bathing suit. And the idea is the Pope is swimming back and forth as exposition unfolds. So truthfully in this scenario, right, the audience is probably thinking, wait, the Pope is not wearing Pope clothes. He's swimming in a pool right now. And before the audience realizes they're being fed exposition, the scene is over. He describes this exposition burying technique as Pope in the pool. So you're simply giving your audience something else substantial to chew on while delivering your exposition. And before the audience realizes you're feeding them an exposition sandwich, boom, you're out of the scene. Double mumbo jumbo. This ties directly into the audience suspension of disbelief concept. So there's only but so much an audience member is gonna be able to handle in a movie. So as a writer, we're not trying to overwhelm the audience or give them more than they can handle. Now Snyder believed that audience members will only accept one piece of magic per movie. Broadly, we shouldn't be seeing ghosts and vampires in the same movie. Unless you create a well-established set of rules that governs this universe, like in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, J.R.R. Tolkien's works in comic book films. And remember, this is just a rule that can be broken if done properly, like in everything, everywhere, all at once. But the reason why this film works so well is because the entire film is centered around one concise, controlling idea. Be, be kind. kind. Trust me, the Daniels knew this rule existed, which is why they were able to work around it and get about seven Oscars. But odds are, if the majority of us try to break this rule without properly knowing what we're doing, then we're just gonna end up with more Sharknados. Laying pipe. Yep, that's the rule. So when we are setting up our story or establishing our premise, we are going about a process Blake Snyder calls laying pipe. On the beat sheet, this is everything that happens in our story leading up to the catalyst. But unfortunately, we can only lay pipe for so long before our audience members get bored. Now laying pipe provides, I swear I did not come up with this word. Laying pipe provides the stepping stones for our audience members to understand the setup of our story. But laying too much pipe only serves to lessen the overall quality of the story and lowers the overall quality of the movie going experience. We want to get to our story's hook in about 15 to 25 minutes max. Blake Snyder said, your story's got too much splaining. 
if you can't do it in 15 or 25 minutes or less. Now this is the problem with laying too much pipe. So by needing so much backstory to understand the whole story, the entire story as a result begins to torque out of shape. So Snyder warns us, please set up your stories in 25 minutes or less. Emphasis on the less part. Black Vet, AKA Too Much Marzipan. Now this is a play off of Double Mumbo Jumbo. The title arcs back to Albert Brooks' SNL parodies he did in the 1970s. There's all kinds of takes. The double take, the elbow take, and today they're working on the spit take. Made so famous by Danny Thomas on Make Room for Daddy. A fake promo he did on SNL was called Black Vet, and he was a war vet and a veterinarian. In other words, this screenwriting mistake occurs when we try to roll up too many great ideas all into one to try to maximize the relevance of our idea or eating too much marzipan. So we've got to keep in mind as writers that a little goes a long way when it comes to extracting the central core ideas behind a small little concept. Take a look at Paranormal Activity, Alien, 10 Cloverfield Lane, Saw. More does not always mean better. Simple is better. We don't want to get too caught up in harvesting all the seeds of all of our story ideas all into one story, mutating it into one work and hoping it's a masterpiece. Oftentimes, less is more. One great concept at a time, please. Watch out for that glacier. Now this is when danger is approaching your protagonist at a snail's pace. They're coming very slowly, like one inch per year. That is how unthreatening your life-threatening event is. Now of course, slow dangers in great movies happen all the time. But even if your danger may lie somewhere in the background, creeping up on our heroes, we've got to remember to keep our danger present. Stakes must be present for all of the characters we care about. Consequences of our imminent threat has got to be known straight out the gate. The Covenant of the Ark. Now this screenwriting law states that every character must change throughout the course of the entire story. Now the characters who usually don't end up changing much are the bad guys. Why? Because they usually end up falling on a spike filled with their own fruitless ideals, philosophies, and stuck in their old immutable ways. Arc is a term that means the change that occurs to any character from the beginning through the middle and to the end of each character's journey. Now we should be able to chart the growth and change our character undergoes throughout the course of the movie. Because in our films, the plot points are so integral to the character's growth, They're so life-changing for everyone involved that even you, the audience, changes as a result. It affects every person in its orbit. So if your story is worth telling, it must be vitally important to everyone involved. Our setups and payoffs for each of our characters must be carefully tracked from beginning to end. So don't worry, this is a task that we usually save for our rewrites. And this change in all characters occurs in some really, really good movies, and it usually improves rewatchability. So before you sit down and write, or rewrite, notate how each character is going to arc by charting their internal and external journeys from start to finish. On the beat sheet, write down the physical and emotional milestones your characters must complete in order to arc. Remember, broadly, good guys are those willing to accept change as a positive force. Bad guys are those who refuse to change, who will curl up in their own juices, unable to move out of the rut that their lives represent. To succeed in life is to be able to transform. Real change occurs when, at the end of the film, there is a fundamental alteration of their internal philosophies about how they live their lives. Don't know if we have any anime fans in the building, but like what happened to Aaron in season four of Attack on Titan. Keep the press out. Now this is a lesson that Snyder learned from Steven Spielberg himself. Unless your story truly requires media outlets and the news to really tell your story, Spielberg advises Snyder to keep the press out. Let's take E.T. for instance. Spielberg discovered that the reality of the E.T. premise would be destroyed if the press was involved. But by keeping the alien a secret among the family and the block, the magic experienced by E.T. was able to stay alive. In other words, the magic stayed grounded and real with respect to the story. When you bring the press into the AT story, we'd effectively be striking the same chord as breaking the fourth wall. All of the joy the alien brought to life in this story would be gone, dead. Fine, you're like, Alan, my story needs the news in it, okay? 
All right, whenever you add the press in, think about this. What does the press bring to your overall premise? And what does the press have to do with the core values of your entire story? Now, unless you're dealing with a Gone Girl kind of story where public perception was key to how the story functioned, then keep the press out. Or at least bring the press in with care. If you'd like to have the press in your story, just think about this. What does Nightcrawler and Gone Girl have in common? Well, the press is directly tied in to the main character's perception of themselves. She wants the public to view her as this heroic victim. And Jake Gyllenhaal's character's mission was to use the power of the press in order to build his news empire. In both cases, the press is directly tied to each character's central conflict, or it was a huge part of their outer motivation. Hey, if you wanna grab a cool camera plate screwdriver and a bottle opener all in one, pick up a clover key, you'll be supporting the channel. Haven't seen my film yet? Don't worry, I'm gonna drop a link in the description below so you can check it out. It's always a pleasure talking to you guys. Until next time, see ya.